partnership is concerning for human rights in Latin America for a number of reasons. First, the history of lax enforcement of labor and environmental provisions in other free trade agreements concerning Latin America. Second, the ways in which investor rights undermine labor, environmental, and human rights and democratic processes. Third, the fact that advances in protection of labor rights and human rights is not required before joining, which is particularly concerning in the case of Mexico. Um, and then fourth, although I won't go into the specifics here, there is concern that the intellectual property agreement uh, provisions on patents have implications for the human right to health and access to medicines. And finally, the problem of rising violence against labor leaders, environmental activists, and other human rights defenders, which is generally not considered part of the labor and environmental issues considered in trade agreements. First, the history of lax enforcement, and this is a huge obstacle. Um, as John mentioned, it took seven years for the U.S. and Guatemalan labor groups to convince the U.S. government to bring a trade tribunal case against Guatemala under dr CAFTA agreement for its failure to protect core labor standards. During the time period, from the time the petition was filed until the U.S. government finally acted, 68, uh, no, excuse me, 62 trade unions were killed in Guatemala. 62 trade unions during that labor period. 72 have been killed since CAFTA came into effect. Guatemala fails to protect freedom of association and collective bargaining by inadequate labor inspections, obstacles to registering unions, failure to ensure compliance with court order, orders, and the failure to inve effectively investigate and prosecute threats and attacks against trade unions. Guatemala is ranked five on a scale of one to five with five being the worst in the International Trade Union Confederation's list of the world's worst countries for workers. And yet, CAFTA benefits continue for Guatemala. Peru. The U.S.-Peru agreement attracted support with its supposedly more enforceable labor and environmental provisions, including a separate thoughtful annex on forestry issues. But the Peruvian government still rolled back worker protections once the agreement came into effect. According to the Labor <coughs> Advisory Council to the USTR, since the agreement came into force, the Peruvian government has reduced protections for workers and weakened mechanisms to enforce labor legislation. Uh, according to environmental groups, the majority of Peru's wood slated for export is still harvested illegally, and the US government is active on only one such case. The US government is re reluctant to act to address violations of labor and environmental clauses, including the forestry annex, even though these were heralded as important advances in protecting labor and environmental rights. Colombia. The US Colombia Labor Action Plan, signed in 2011, is not part of the free trade agreement, nor enforceable, but a, a separate agreement signed prior to the passage of the FTA. Unfortunately, the U.S. government did not require Colombia to comply with the Labor Action Plan fully prior to approval of the FTA. The Labor Action Plan does cover many of the right issues, and it has had some impact. Um, for example, creating institutions to um, protect labor rights and reducing the still extremely serious problem of anti-union violence and impunity for such attacks. But this violence and many other violations remain serious obstacles to freedom of association in Colombia. The joint complaint filed by the U by U.S. and Colombian unions in May 2016, five years after the Labor Action Plan was signed, highlights continued failures to address violence against trade unions, among other things. There were 99 murders and 955 threats registered between the time the agreement came into effect and April 19, 2016, in, according to the National Labor School. Colombia remains the country with the highest number of murders of trade unionists in the world in 2015, with 20 trade unionists assassinated, according to the International Confederation of Trade Unions. There's also violent repression of strikes and protests by state security forces, new forms of subcontracting, which had been one of the major issues of the Labor, labor Action Plan, um, and these forms of subcontracting intend to obscure the direct employment relationship between the company and its workers, and thus, skirting labor laws, and there's also the failure to sanction companies effectively for violations of worker rights. 
The Labor Action Plan remains an important blueprint for change. And we welcome the efforts by members of the U.S. Congress, including the two members who have sponsored this briefing, to press for compliance, which is one reason it has some traction, but its promises still remain largely unfulfilled. The second major problem with the TPP for Latin America is the lack of preconditioning, uh, preconditions for joining. I really agree with John that the, the, the moment you have to encourage progress on all kinds of issues is actually before the agreement is, enters into force. We could definitely see that in the Colombia case. Um, and now, neither Mexico nor Peru would be in compliance with poor labor standards prior to joining the TPP. And unlike the cases of Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei, there are not even consistency plans or anything else provided to encourage compliance with key issues. Mexico is especially concerning on labor rights and human rights fronts. On labor rights, the Mexican government is far from consistently protecting worker rights. Some of the major issues include the widespread use of protection contracts, which are often signed without the knowledge of workers instead of proper collective bargaining agreements, meaning workers are governed by contracts they have not ratified and in many cases have not even seen. The conciliation and arbitration boards that are supposed to protect worker rights routinely fail to do so. False, non-independent unions remain a persistent problem. Mexico is ranked four on a scale of one to five, with five being the worst in the International Trade Union's Confederation um, list of the world's worst countries for workers. The overall human rights picture in Mexico is even more alarming. There's the persistent use of torture by security forces, the failure to investigate the vast majority of 27,000 disappearances since 2007, the, invo the involvement of security forces and corrupt local officials in disappearances of Mexican citizens and abuses against and killings of migrants crossing through Mexico. There's no more disturbing example than the case of the 42 students of Ayotzinapa who disappeared while in custody of Mexico's security forces in Iguala in September 2014. Despite Mexico's welcome invitation to the interdisciplinary group of experts to assist in the investigation, the Mexican government has not followed up on the experts' recommendations to date. This case that has convulsed Mexico remains in impunity. The third problem is the potential impact of investor state provisions. The enormous power given to investors to challenge laws concerning labor rights, human rights, and the environment are of great concern for Latin America. Take the case of Peru. According to a former environmental vice minister of Peru, foreign investors use the investor state dispute settlement powers to pressure the Peruvian government to pardon polluters and strong arm mining uh, concessions in areas where indigenous communities rise up in opposition to environmentally damaging projects. In one case, Ranko versus Peru, the Ranko Mining Company argues Peru had violated the U.S. Peru FDA by not granting the company a third extension on its overdue commitment to install pollution abatement equipment in a metal smelter at owned and included site in uh, La Roya, Peru. In Colombia, Toby Mining claims the government's decision to create a nature reserve and prohibit mining within its borders violates the corporation's rights under the U.S.-Columbia Free Trade Agreement and is asking Colombia to allow mining in the Amazon or pay $16.5 billion. These investor powers limit the capacity of the state to protect their citizens and are especially harmful for indigenous and other local communities whose well-being are affected by environmentally damaging kinds of development over which they have few resources to defend themselves. <coughs> Finally, and this is a very important point for Latin America, there's the refusal to include violence against labor unionists, environmental activists, and human rights defenders as a relevant issue in trade agreements. We often hear, oh, that just doesn't, that's not uh, in the scope. Um, the Colombia Labor Action Plan is an exception, and it's a good exception, but it's not a binding part of trade agreement. Rights do not exist just because someone puts them on paper. Rights are won through organizing. If those who organize for rights are not protected, then I don't know what we're talking about when we talk about defending the labor and the environment. This is a deadly problem in Latin America. Let's look at trade unions. Of the six countries worldwide singled out by the International Trade Union Confederation for most concerning issues of violence against trade unions in 2015, Three are in Latin America, Colombia, Guatemala, Honduras. 
Now let's look at environmental activists. 122 of 185 killings of environmental activists in 2015 documented worldwide by global witness or in Latin America. 12 were in Peru, the country with the fourth largest number of murders of environmentalists in the world in 2015. From 2010 to 2015, 50 environmental activists were killed in Peru and 33 were killed in Mexico. Many of those killed are indigenous peoples. Um, threats and attacks against environmental activists are increasing in Latin America. And this is one of the most concerning human rights challenges facing the region today. The TPP, as it stands, does nothing to protect such activists, and indeed, through the investor provisions, undermines their strength. Thank you. <coughs>